Hi guys! Today, I will be showing you how to use Instant Art AI. As you can see here on the main page, there are many images that are displayed and you can adjust to how many works you want to see. You can adjust it from 2 up to 10 columns. First, let's get started by clicking on the Create button which can be found here on the bottom. It will take us to a register page and make us create an account before testing out the AI art generator. We have to fill out details such as name, email, and password. After creating an account, and it will have five tabs on the top of the page. These tabs are Home, Generate, My Images, Discord, and likes let's click on the page that says generate now that we're on this page we can start generating ai art first we have to think of a prompt or words that can be used to describe the image we want the ai generator to make we can either be super vague about the prompt or we can be clear with what we want we can also even use the given example here which is a steampunk teddy bear vending machine. For me, I want to use the prompt space butterfly in the forest. We can also give a negative prompt, which are the things to exclude when generating the art. For example, I don't want flowers or the sun to be seen in the image. Here on the right side, a box can be seen which contains two options, either art or stock. Both have the same options to choose from, which are the dimensions or the size of the image that will be generated. We can choose from either landscape, square, or portrait. And this will make your image either more narrow or more wide depending on what option you choose. Second, we have the model ID. There are many options to choose from and we will go through these one by one later. But for now, we will choose the Stable Diffusion model ID because it's the main or default model. And then we have the Guidance Scale. The guidance scale can be adjusted to how strict you want the AI to follow the prompt we've given. If it's low, then the AI will have more control on the art, and it won't follow the prompt as much. Whereas if it's high, it will strictly follow the prompt instead. I will be showing both later, but for now, let's set it at a fairly high number like 9. Lastly. We have image counts, and this will affect the rendering time depending on what number we put this scale on. If it's set on a low number, it will be rendered faster. But if there are more image counts, let's say if it's on the highest number, which is 4, then it will take longer to render. Let's leave it at 2 because that's a good number. And then let's generate. After it's generated the art, we can now see here that it has made two image counts and that it followed the prompt that we have here and it excluded any flowers or the sun from the image. Now let's click on it. And when you click on the image, it will give you these details about it, like the prompt, the negative prompts, the model, and the guidance scale, what seed it is, and its dimensions. And you have the option whether you want to save it or favorite it or not. Now that we have generated AI art, when we go on this page, we can see the images that we have generated. Now let's try and type in the same prompt that we had, but adjust the guidance scale and image counts. Let's try to make the image counts just be 1. Let's make the guidance scale be a lower number like 3. And let's see what will happen if we generate this kind of image. Now we can see here if we click on the image that 
it has more creative freedom if the guidance scale is on the low, since our only prompt was space butterfly in the forest, but the AI art generator also added a girl in the middle and it created more than just one kind of butterfly but multiple ones. If we go to my images and we compare the three together, you can see how different they are from one another since this one strictly followed the prompt while the other one was given more creative freedom. Now that we have tried generating an image with the main model, it's now time to see what the other models will look like. So for the first one here, we have the Anything V3 model, and this is what it looks like. It focused more on the space aspect rather than in the forest one, but it still follows the prompt. Next, we have the Mid Journey model, and this one focuses more on the forest aspect instead of the space one. And the main focus here isn't really the butterfly, but rather the scenery itself. The image will really depend on what kind of model you will choose because the model will also have its own kind of style and way it will generate the image. So it's all about finding the perfect kind of model that you will need for the kind of prompt that you will put in. Next, we have this model. Now we have the wavy diffusion model. This one seems a lot more cartoonish or animated rather than the others. Then we have the F22 diffusion model. This one looks a lot more realistic. Here we have the synthwave diffusion model. This one doesn't have a butterfly in it unless it's just interpreted in a different way. But again, it has its own unique style, and the way the images are generated really does depend on what kind of style the model will follow. Here we have Mid Journey Paper Cut model. Next, we have the Redshift Diffusion model. Then we have the Protogen 3.4 model. Here we have the Arcane Diffusion model, and this one is supposed to imitate the art style of the animated series Arcane. And as you can see, the way they interpreted Space Butterfly in the forest is in the form of a human wearing butterfly wings. Next is the Mo Dai Diffusion model. Next is the Food Crit model. Then we have Vintedoi Diffusion model. Here we have a Portrait Plus Diffusion model, and this one, in the name in itself, is focused on having a style that looks like a portrait. That's why there's a person in there instead of focusing on the other parts of the prompt, even though the guidance scale is on 7. Because again, the model name in itself is Portrait Plus. Then we have Shown Legacy Diffusion Model. Then we have Robo Diffusion Model, and the way it interpreted Space Butterfly is through having a robot with butterfly wings. Here we have an Exposure Diffusion Model, and its style is obviously focused on exposure. Next, we have a Model Shoot Diffusion. And again, in its name itself, it's a model shoot, so it's going to have a person in it, and this is the model. It's gonna pretend that they're on a photo shoot in the forest. Here we have Icons Diffusion Model. Next, we have the Naturatize Diffusion Model, and this is the best one to use for this kind of prompt since it's related to nature, and this one looks the best one in my opinion. Then we have the LinkedIn Diffusion Model. Then we have the Bulletize Diffusion Model. Here we have the Firewatch Diffusion Model. Then we have Low Poly Diffusion Model. Here we have Disco Diffusion Model. Then this one we have the Main Model, but it's different from the first one. Now using the same prompt, we will move on to trying out the stock option. For this category, there is only one model ID and that is Analog Diffusion. This is a dream booth model trained on a diverse set of analog photographs. Again, we will try making the image count 1 and we will use the default setting of the guidance scale which is 7 and we will generate the photo. So this is what it looks like if you use the stock category or option in the AI art generator. Now let's also try to generate this prompt right here which is a group of office workers in a field of daisies. 
So this is what the image looks like if we try to generate um, people in it. Now we know how to create or generate these images. We can go here to the next page, which is the Discord of Instant Art. And here you can try to join their Instant Art Discord along with 11,136 other members. Now we can move on to the last page, which are the likes page. And here we can see what images you have hearted or liked from this website. Now that is all for today's video, and I hope this helped. Thank you for watching.